Welcome to this new video. I realize it's been a while since I uploaded something because I've been, well, quite busy. And I'm still busy. But never mind, I'm gonna make a new video anyway. In this video I'm going to discuss four words. Four words that are kind of technical and which you may encounter several times. And the first one is testament. I'm going to talk about the meaning of the word testament. And it actually means covenant. It's a very biblical word. It, it appears in the Bible many times, at least the word covenant. It comes from the Hebrew word berit, which means covenant, of course. And in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, it's translated as diatheke. Even later, in the Latin, it was translated as either foedus or as testamentum. And here you can see the word testament. And the word testament is, of course, very important because we have the Old Testament and the New Testament. And there are several texts that indicate that there is an Old Covenant and a New Covenant. But I think one of the most important ones, at least in the, in the New Testament, is found in Luke 22 verse 20. And I'm reading from the ESV, the English Standard Version. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, and then Jesus is quoted, This cup that is poured out for you is the New Covenant in my blood. And here you have the word covenant, which is translated as testament. And the second word I want to discuss with you is the word canon. We've already seen this word in the last video where I used the word deutero-canonical. And canon comes from the Greek word kanon. It's, it's a long O, that's why I put a little stripe on top of the O. And a canon was actually a reed or a measuring stick or a rule or a ruler. But a word could also be read as ideal, example and many of those kind of things. And the canonical books are basically books that are believed to contain or believed to possess spiritual authority. And in this sense we have a canon of the Old Testament and a canon of the New Testament. The next word I want to discuss is the word Apocrypha. We saw this in the last video where I mentioned several books that are considered to be Apocrypha. Apocrypha in Greek means hidden. So these are the so-called hidden books. But it also has connotations like esoteric, spurious or of questionable authenticity. The last word I want to discuss is the word pseudepigraph. I haven't used this word before, but you will encounter this in many books. Pseudepigraph means false authorship. You may recognize the pseudo part, for example when you talk about pseudoscience, it means fake, and the part epigraph in this case means authorship. For example, when a book is claimed to be written by person A, but in reality is written by someone else, by person B, then it is often called a pseudepigraph. One famous example could be the first book of Enoch, which was supposedly written by Enoch, a biblical hero. Something else you may want to keep in mind is that sometimes scholars would talk about pseudo-Pauline or pseudo patrian literature. In that case they refer to the New Testament books written by Paul or Peter, or at least some of them, and they would say, well, actually, it wasn't really written by them. So then they used the word pseudo-Pauline or pseudo patrine and now you know what that means. That's it for now. Hopefully you found that interesting. Some of you have been asking me what my plans are with this YouTube channel and this blog and all of that. And in order to hopefully answer most of your questions, I have decided to write a little blog. The link to which will be in the descriptions below. And please let me know what you think of this video and my future plans.